Hello guys, um, I'm Jason, and I'm here right now with Shingo Two, a very legendary, awesome rapper, and a really, really, really good friend of uh, Javits. And uh, he's here in Seoul right now, and I'm really honored to uh, talk to you, Shingo Two. Yeah. yeah, so I have a couple questions here. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, the first question is, uh, how has uh, Javits influenced your music? Well, uh, well, obviously, we have a good chemistry, right? right. And uh, it's definitely something that's developed in the music as well. Of course, you know. So, uh, you know, of course, I knew him personally, but right, right. It's something that's grown like way beyond our personal relationship. Of course, and, that, and that's how I, I, uh, how I approach my relationship with the music. Right, right, and right. How right. I've grown to it, you know. Uh -huh. So. It's just a really strange and also beautiful dynamic. You know, I feed off of the music and how it grows and how it's accepted and appreciated by the audience. Right, right. And, and I always kind of grow from it. So that's how I'm influenced. That's nice, right? So music is like a conduit, you know, between the producer and myself as I am. Oh, yeah, because this was really like a joint collaboration. He came with the music, I called the concept and the, and the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, my next question is, uh, when did you actually first meet you guys? This must have been around the year 2000. Mm -hmm. yeah. He just really approached me out of the blue. I didn't know who he was. And really? Yeah, I mean, around 2000. Okay, you know, okay. Um, and then we just met up and we vibed. And the rest of the history, really. Did you meet up in the States or Japan? This was in Tokyo. Tokyo? Yeah. Wow. Because he already had you know, a record uh, store. Uh -huh. and, and he had started for now 12 inches back then. Right. So I guess that was his intention. He wanted to cut a single with me. Because uh -huh. it was really a while before he even started out putting CDs. Oh, yeah. Really, a purist, he only wanted to cut vinyl. Oh, really? So, yeah, that's how we first put out our Love to Say Part 1 right, you know, right. Around, around that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, um, you mentioned in yesterday's uh, Mujabi's uh, tribute show about um, Love Sick, and you're really known for the Love Sick series. So, what does the series mean to you? Series, um, it's well, again, I would like to open that question up and say it's really open to right. interpretation. Right. For me personally, I started writing that song, you know, as I listened to the cool music. And, and it's, it really is a love song, but it could be directed towards a person or the love of your life, which could be anything or profession or dream. Right. So, it's a story about you longing for something and thinking you may not get there, but you're still wishing that it happens. And I think that feeling everybody can relate to that. Of course. So, so did you make the song kind of like, like you said, over an interpretation? Because for me, it was more about like fighting struggles, you know, like, but, you know, overcoming them at right. the end. And like, don't care what anyone else says about that. Because if you believe in yourself, if your friends and family believe in you, then Right, so I, I think that that's definitely a part of how how I wrote it in character of the song, in case with the song. Right. And the title reflects that as well. Uh -huh. And, you know, right. It, it's just like a different way to approach the topic of the age old topic. Right, yeah. Right. It's just to kind of twist it up a little bit. You know, like even how I wrote the title. Right. You know, everything is kind of compressed. Right, right. right. Wait, wait. Um, next, next one's pretty easy. I think. Um, do you listen to a lot of hip hop? And if so, who do you check out? Like, I, I can honestly say I don't know much, <laughs> if at all. Like, you know, around year 2000, maybe a couple people hit me up and I listen to them, but I'm really not that aware. Oh, no worries. To say the truth. Oh, that's cool. No worries. Uh, how long does it take for you to create a song from start to finish? That also depends. Really? Yeah. Um, like for instance, um, Love Sick ramping out, Love Sick 6. 6? <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Well, this, this is like a long story. But sure, like, okay. You know, because 4, 5, 6, like we, we started working on it together. And, right. And 
as like three part series. So I started vibing off that concept and I had lyrics developed here and there right, for right. all three parts. Right, right. Even a long time before he right. passed. Right. You know, because I was developing that idea. Right. And eventually I got the music for a six, so I kind of tailored all my rhymes, you know, to that beat. To that beat. Then I finished it up maybe over six months to a year. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, of course. Till the time, okay, we gotta go to the studio, yeah. and, um, you know, tinkering, blah, blah, blah. But usually, when I work with artists now, you know, it's really not a problem for me to um, finish a song in a few hours mm. and record it. Right. And that's not saying that if I take less time, it's gonna be, you know, a lot more simple or, 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 or yeah, or more simple. It doesn't mean that at all. If the concept is good and you already have a lot of ideas saved, it's you know kind of in your head and match the beat, it just comes out. You know, so it's, or you know the other way around, you can have a beautiful beat and right. kind of like slack off and get distracted, and it can take it takes two years to write. And that doesn't mean that just because you you know you took two years to masterpiece. Right. So right. it's all you know it's all relative. Relative. Right. Right. Relative to how well you communicate with the beat right. and, and also you know, if you've been writing songs for quite a number of years like right. you're very conscious of not trying to repeat what you've said in the past. Of course, yeah. So you, you yeah, really want to stay creative and sometimes you can get into the mind game with that. You know, I'm sure all painters or <laughs> yeah, right. you know, any right. any kind of artist can Writer. face that. Like if you really just start overthinking about oh I don't want to do this because I stepped on this, you know, rock before and you wanna avoid it, it's like you know, kinda of suffocate yourself. Of course, yeah. So 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 that said, sometimes it's better if you in the zone and just come down and Mm. Even if you're saying the same thing, it might come out in a different way. Different angle. Yeah, different right, angle. Right, yeah, that's right. what it's all about. Got it. Got it. Um, yeah, a couple more questions. Uh, is it easier to rap in English or Japanese? Again? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It really depends on the beat. For me, because, you know, I've, I've really set out from the very beginning right. not to mix the two. When I rap in English, I rap exclusively in English. Yeah. When I do Japanese rhymes, it's exclusively in Japanese. Really? Like, so, does your mind, does your brain get like jumbled up sometimes? No, 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 not at all. No. That's awesome. But you know, I've been fortunate in my education that I can do this. Really? You know, because yeah, I, I kind of grew up in two different right. cultures, and also for me, writing in English was a progression. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I grew up in English speaking countries, but when I came here. Or came to the station when I was 15. Like right. it really took a while for me to just be fluent in writing. Oh right, right. In general, in general. Right. And then I was introduced to rap, like officially, you know, before right. I was just a casual listener. Right. Then I started meeting MCs, and I was around, you know, 18 years old, which was pretty late for an average right. American rapper, for sure. So it really took, took, I would say, three, four, or five years, even more, to kind of really be comfortable in my own skin. Right. Like writing and rapping. Be. Right. So, you know, it was just something that came with time. And then back around when I started writing in Japanese, it was like a reflection of what I had learned you know, with English rap. I was like, right. I want to do this in Japanese. So that was kind of like a whole hard tra translation you know, process. Right, of course. Of course. Definitely. Um, no, it's cool. It's cool. Like, I get my languages mixed up all the time. Right. <laughs> like, I speak like Korean and English, and I slur them together. Right. It's terrible for me. Um, the last question is, um, can you tell us like, like a funny or cool story from uh, Kujadis? Like, something that sticks out of your mind? Well, you know, he, he was a very uh, re reclusive, he was a recluse. He was a very uh, introverted individual, you know. Of course, speaking face to face, you know, he's a very laid back dude. Right, for sure, for sure. And, uh, he was a very interesting character. Um, right, for sure, for sure. Like, there's not much information about Nujabes, and I'm sure it's because, you know, he's a private guy, right? He just wants to keep himself. I'm assuming. Right? Yeah. And totally cool. It's just, yeah, yeah I just, we just wanted to hear if he had any funny stories. Like, wow, that's. You know, like, for example, you know, like he picked up the flute uh -huh. somewhere along the way, right? And he started learning it, right? To, to actually, you know, play it right. on, on his songs, and I, I don't know if he ever did it live, but he was really going towards that direction. Uh -huh. So, there was one time I 
went to his studio, and then uh, the moment I walked into his studio, he's like there playing the flute yeah. in a swivel chair, and that's how he like greets me, right? Playing the flute, right? You're just like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like what are you doing, man? Yeah, kind of like that, you know. Just playing the flute. <laughs> yeah. So. Interesting. He was a very interesting guy. You know? he of really, course. He really didn't uh, try to be intentionally funny. No, he, no. But he would yeah. be kind of funny like that, you know. Right. right. He was very particular with his style, and he would he would always like listen to your feedback, you know, like like when I was recording Love Sick Part. This is two. Two. Okay. My favorite person at his studio. Um, and I think we were working off of like a Mac G4 back then, and those are notorious for being super loud, right? Yeah, they are. So I told him, yo, you know, I think you should like do something about that noise. You know, <laughs> then next time we go there, like it's sitting in a glass case, you know, <laughs> because you gotta get that separate case. Yeah, to, right. You know, you close the sound. The sound, right? He was like, oh, you know, I got the case because you told me about the noise. Did you listen to your feedback, right? Yeah, so he was really a very sensitive guy like that. And if you point something out, the next time it's lost, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty so, funny. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, yeah, so definitely you answered all my questions. I okay. am um, so um, honored and happy you, uh, that you're here. Uh, oh, I'm here. And um, it's cool. Hopefully you visit Seoul again. Okay. And we can definitely um, talk to you again, yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right, thank you again. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, this is Shingo 2, Jason, signing off. Oh, <laughs>